Okay, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate the use of loops and the use of conditional statements. And what I want to do is create a simple calculator that does something with a user input. The system should display a menu asking the user if they want to add, subtract, multiply, divide, use modulus, or exit the program. Once the menu is displayed and the user selects the option, the system will ask for two entries and compute according to the selection. Afterwards, it will display the result. This should happen continuously in a loop until the user selects the exit, the exit program feature from the menu. So what I need to do first is write some pseudocode so that I can understand what it is that I'm going to do. And so the first thing would be display menu. This would be the first option. Once I display the menu, I'm going to ask for selection. If selection equals exit, end. Else, if equals 1, then add. Else, subtract. I'm sorry, else if it's equal to 2, subtract. Else if it's equal to 3, multiply, and so forth. The point here is what I want to do is organize what I want to do with the code based on some pseudocode. And this allows me to kind of see where it is that I'm going to take the code. You can also do the same with um, you can do the same with a flowchart, which we'll do, which I'll demonstrate now. Oh, sorry, back to this screen. And what I'm trying to do, there we go. Delete everything. Okay. So what I want to do now is maybe write, uh, draw the flow chart so that I can kind of see where my code is going. This is this is kind of the des des design phase that that um, is used before you start programming. So let's go ahead, choose my pen again, and I'm going to start here. And so the first thing based on the pseudo code is going to be show menu. show menu and okay so the first thing that I do after that is I ask the question is exit meaning did the user select exit if the answer is yes then I end the program so this is if yes if it's no then what I want to do is I want to get num get the numbers meaning the input from the user. Okay. And once I get the numbers, then I can start asking my other questions. So I can ask, well, is the selection, is it one, meaning add. So if it is add, then I'm going to add. If it's not, this would be yes. If it's not, then I'm going to ask again, well, is it 2? And if it is 2, then I'm going to subtract. So this would be yes. If it's no, then I'm going to ask, well, is it 3? And I'm going to do this all the way to 5. And if it's yes, I believe it was multiply. So I would do this all the way continuously till 5. I'm not going to do that for the purpose of, of uh, making this a little bit quicker. So once I do all of this, then what I want to do is, well, display the results. So display results. And so these would end up coming here. I would need a line from each of these. And these would go here. Sorry if it's not drawn out. Basically this all of these go directly to display results once these are uh, executed. 
so again if yes if no if yes if no if no it would just come back here and really do nothing and then once the, the results are displayed I would go back because it's a continuous loop I would go back to this well is it exit so as you can see this would continue being continuously be called over and over and over again until in the menu I, uh, I, I say to exit and in that case then the program exits I'm sorry there is actually one error here this wouldn't go to is exit this would go to display menu so after the results after display results this right here would go to show menu and if in the show menu the user selects uh, to exit then it would go it would it would exit out of the out of the program again that's just a quick rundown of how to how to kind of set the logic and the flow of the program it doesn't mean that the flowchart has to be perfect when you're designing and it doesn't mean that the soda code has to be perfect when you're designing it the purpose of those is to give is to break down what it is that you need to do so that you can execute the the writing of the code a little bit more simple for example I know that I'm gonna need to create some sort of show menu method I know that I'm gonna have to do something for these add subtract and so forth I know that I'm, I may need to do some sort of method to get the number and so forth so this just lets me organize my thoughts same thing for display results it doesn't mean that this is exactly how the program will end up being so let's go now to the code and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new project and I'm going to use C sharp Windows and it's gonna be a console application and let's just call this junk code delete so that I know that I should delete this code at some point because it's just a, for demonstration purposes okay so the first thing that I want to do is declare the local variables that I'm gonna be using and again what I want to do all the time every single time I do I do um, I write any code is I want to comment the code so that in the future if I'm reading it or if somebody else is reading the code they'll be able to understand wh what it is that I was trying to do so I'm gonna start with creating local variables okay so I'm gonna need to know what the user input was so I'm gonna need a variable that holds that so I'm gonna call that user option and I'm gonna instantiate that to zero and then I'm gonna use also the the uh, I'm gonna use a couple of variables that will that will hold the information that the user enters such as the first number and the second number and the result so those will all be ints and we'll use first number and instantiate that to zero as well and second number and instantiate that to zero and results result equals to zero so again I'm not really doing anything interesting in local variables all I'm doing here is just declaring and instantiating my uh, initial variables so that I can I can continue writing the code okay the next thing that I want to do is display the menu and I'm gonna write that in this section and so because I want it to loop continuously then right off the bat I know that I'm gonna have to create some sort of if I if I look back to the code to the pseudo code or to the flowchart I'm gonna notice that it, this is based on the user action so for example go, going back to this I'm showing this menu until the user ends up selecting a exit and then and then um, and then it exits out which means I have to display the menu first before the before the option is is selected so what I want to do is maybe create a maybe create a function or a method that pretty much takes care of this and so let's write that method first and I'm going to write private static int display menu what this will do is it'll return 
the menu selection that the user that the user um, entered that the user selected and so what I want to do is first comment the code here which says displays the actual menu and the return type it's going to be returns an int that represents the user's action and again it's much better to get into the habit of of writing comments before okay so I'm gonna write console dot write line and what this is gonna do is it's gonna display this on the console screen and it's gonna say enter the number chorus corresponding to the action that you would like to perform and we're gonna end that there and we'll display another line and I could have I've could have written this in the same line but for the purpose of readability I'm gonna write I'm gonna separate it and so one is going to be addition and I'm going to add something called environment dot new line which does a, a carriage return line feed so that it looks a lot more organized and then two subtraction plus environment dot new line plus three which is going to be a division plus again environment dot new line plus and as you notice I can I can just come back down as long as I don't have a semicolon like I do here I can continuously write code and this code um, belongs to the top portion and this plus between the the this string one addition plus uh, the environment on new line what that is is concatenation so it's just adding to that string okay so I have division environment dot new line so I would need f uh, four let's see I have addition oh I'm sorry this was multiplication and this one is gonna be four is gonna be division plus environment dot new line and five is going to be modulus plus environment dot new line and like I said I need to be able to exit out of the program so if the user enters six it's gonna mean end program and there I go so that's basically all this is gonna do is gonna it's it's going to display the menu however I still need the option so it displayed the menu but I need the user to be able to enter that option and for me to do something with that option so I'm gonna write get the option code okay and to get the option I'm gonna create something called int option value which is a temporary variable and I'm gonna use something called try catch and what try catch is is if something was entered that I did not expect instead of crashing the entire program it gives me the ability to account for it and so because I'm doing this option value equals int dot parse console dot read line because I'm doing this and I'll explain this in a second this could crash really really badly and so what I want to do is be able to account for that since what I'm expecting is the user to enter either a number one either a number two either a number three and so forth because the instructions are enter the number corresponding to the action that you would like to perform then I'm expecting a number console.readline however returns text returns a string so what I'm saying is hey whatever the user entered here make sure you convert it or parse it into an int and then save it to this however if the user accidentally enters a letter or some sort of weird character that isn't a number it's gonna crash and crash miserably and so what it's gonna do is it's gonna say "Ooh, no there's an error here and it's gonna right away go to the catch and it's gonna set the value equal to zero so now I can just say return option value and I'll deal with I'll deal with that zero at a later time if it's an error in input and so that is how 
my display menu will work and I have that code ready to go okay good deal so now I can go back to my original place to displaying the menu so because again this is this is a a a constant menu that's going to be displayed until the user selects zero then what I want is while and user option so while user option is not equal to zero I'm sorry it was not equal to six then I want to basically do a bunch of do all this now notice that the first time that it runs it cannot be equal to six it's impossible because I I automatically set it equal to zero meaning the user option is zero it means I just started the the program so go ahead and execute so you are guaranteed that this that this program will execute at least once you are guaranteed that the menu will at least be shown once afterwards I can say user option equals display menu so now it displays the menu and it returns that number that the user selected back into here and I can say okay well if user option is equal to six meaning if the user told me hey I wanna exit the program then return and return will just exit out of the code completely it'll it'll exit out of all of this and then the program so now what I can do is okay now I need to get the numbers and if you look back at the flowchart you'll notice that I show the menu if it's exit it's gonna end otherwise it's gonna get the numbers so we're following the sequence of the flowchart okay so get the numbers well the thing is there are two numbers here and I want to be able to ensure the user to enter the number and then maybe do some sort of validation to make sure that they are in fact numbers so this is a great place to specialize the code and write a write a a method that just does that 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 pretty much just accepts user input and uh, obtains obtain, obtains a number so I'm gonna write private static int get number and that's going to be the code and so what I want to do is I want to use a try catch again anytime that you're messing around with uh, users with user input and messing around with stuff that users that users are going to enter you can never assume that the user knows what they're doing therefore you need to ensure that you check what it is that the user is doing so that you understand the results that are going to be obtained so right here get the number and parse the result and so to get the number I'm gonna say int number equals int dot parse and then console dot read line that's all it's gonna do so and then return number so what this is gonna do is it's gonna call console dot read line and whatever number uh, the the person uh, the person entered whatever really it could be anything but whatever value was entered it's gonna try to parse it into this and then put it into this variable once once this is parsed into the variable then it's going to go ahead and return out of it and here if in fact the user accidentally enters something that wasn't a number then I can account for it so I'll go if there is an error catch it and return zero and I'm gonna put console dot right line oops right line error in input and then simply return zero exactly as that and there I go and what this allows me to do is since there's two numbers I can call this twice instead of having to write the same code and I can comment this as gets the number based on user input input there we go. okay so now we can go back here and actually call for this input and so here where I wrote get the numbers I can say 
I can write the instruction. Remember, we always want to give users instructions, clear instructions. So this will say, please input, oops, please input the first number and hit the enter key. Okay, so that'll give the instruction, and now what I want to do is actually get the number. So I have that local variable that I had declared called first number, which is right here how I declared it. And so I'm going to set first number equal to get number, which is that function that I just called. And then I can copy and paste this code pretty much for the second number. And so in this, this case, I'm going to write, well, second number, and then just change this to second number. And so as you can see, what this does is it helps me reuse code. So instead of having to write those lines of code twice and check twice and all that, all I need to do is just call that function and store it in a second variable. And that's it. I'm done. Okay. So now if we look on our, on our uh, flow chart, now we got the number. So now we need to determine what it is, if it's 1, if it's 2, if it's 3, and so forth, so that we can perform the operation that's needed. And so we're going to go back here and take action. Okay, so if user option is equal to one, then I want to then I want to use addition. And so what this is going to do is just well execute whatever code I have here. Oops. So the addition is just result equals first number plus second number nothing different okay else if user option equals two and same thing result equals first number minus second number and there I go and so I'm gonna do this pretty much for for uh, for each action and change change the result according um, yeah change the result accordingly so here this is gonna be three this is gonna be four this is gonna be five so I'm gonna change this to three change this to four and change this to five and so if it's three it's multiplication so I can change that operation if it's four it's division and if it's five it's modulus which would be the percentage sign modulus now there could be an error here in division and actually let me comment this code so I know what we're talking about this one is subtraction this one is multiplication this one here is division and this one here is modulus okay so if this is zero this is gonna crash and notice I don't have a try catch here so what I may want to do is do add a try here and just catch the result where I can just say result equals zero meaning if 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 the user accidentally enters zero and so uh, a divide by zero is going to be performed I automatically just return zero and I account for that now if you notice it says if else if and then an else statement with an if and then an else statement with an if and so forth as it goes down what I want to do is end it with an else meaning in case it's anything else and I'm just not gonna take any action and all this does is it guarantees that the code will at some point hit at least one of these if it doesn't hit this one it'll hit this one or this one or this one or this one or the last one which is just the else and then that'll be that'll be it for this and what I can do now is print the result and so to print the result I'm just gonna do a right line the result of your action is result and this this code will end up printing exactly that and now we can pretty much test the code so I'm gonna hit F5 and there you go enter the enter the number corresponding to the action you like to perform well I wanna do addition so I'm gonna hit number one 
and enter. Please input the first number, I'm going to enter 5. Please input the next number, I'm going to enter 15 and enter. And there you go, the result of your action is, ooh, I have an error there. <laughs> the result of your action is 20 and it displays the menu again. And it'll keep doing this until I hit 6, which will exit it completely. And action, there it is. And so this code pretty much works as we described in the flowchart. Alright, this will conclude this example. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great day.